The other main method for setting up the bounds for a triple integral is called the shadow method. The shadow method goes outward to inward. In this case, we also pick a variable. Let's say we pick the z variable, and then we flatten our shape. We project down our shape and crush it down by in, in that direction. We get rid of the z coordinate. When we do that, we can think of it as shining a light over top, and that gives us a shadow inside the xy plane. We figure out what points does it lie over top of. Then we set up the boundary bounds for this 2D shape, and we put them on the outside pair of integrals. And then for each fixed value of x and y that are inside this shape, we've got to figure out what are the biggest and smallest that z could be. And we put those on the inside integral. So here's an example. Here's a sphere. x squared plus y squared plus z squared is less than or equal to 2. If we imagine looking over top of that and flattening it down in the z direction, here this is a sphere. We have to recognize that this is a sphere of radius square root 2. And if we look over top and flatten it, this shape gets thickest at the equator. So when we crush it, we see a circle of radius square root 2. Everything up top is a uh, sits inside that. So that's our two-dimensional shadow. So our start is we set up a double integral, let's say dx dy, on the outside. The bounds should be the bounds for a circle of radius square root 2. So y goes between minus square root 2 and plus square root 2. And then x goes between square root of 2 minus y squared negative and square root of 2 minus y squared positive. Those are the bounds for the double integral that goes with this shape. And then on the inside, we have to say, OK, what's the biggest and smallest that z could be? In, for this sphere, we can solve for z. We can say that z squared is less than or equal to the square root of 2 minus x squared minus y squared. The biggest that z can be is on top when z is equal to that square root. And the smallest that z can be is z is minus the square root of 2 minus x squared minus y squared, like so. And so those are what we put as the bounds for our innermost integral. like so. So those would be the bounds for this triple integral. We have to understand what this flattened shape is. We do it on the outside and then we figure out the top and bottom caps in terms of z. Here's another example. This one is going to be a cylinder. The cylinder is x squared plus y squared less than or equal to 1 and 2 is less than or equal to z less than or equal to 3. And what we're going to do in this case is we're going to flatten along the y coordinate. We imagine taking this cylinder here on the right and looking at it from the side or projecting a light from the side. When we do that, the cylinder actually looks kind of flat. It looks rectangular in shape because the z coordinates still only go between 2 and 3. And the x coordinate, because it, it satisfies x squared plus y squared is less than 1, the x coordinates go between minus 1 and 1. So all told, this outside shape that we set up the bounds for a double integral for is a rectangle. z goes between 2 and 3, and x goes between minus 1 and 1. And then inside those, we have to figure out what are the biggest and smallest that y could possibly be. They depend on potentially x and z. And to do that, we go back here and we say, actually, well, y squared is less than or equal to 1 minus x squared. That means that y is between minus the square root of that and plus the square root of that. Like so. So that sets up the bounds for this triple integral. As you can see, we could have flattened this in different ways. We could have flattened it in the x direction and got a different rectangle. We could have flattened it vertically and gotten a circle for our outside boundary and then 
just the bounds from two to three for our inside integral because those are the smallest and biggest z could be. Different choices, different orders will give us different bounds of integration. So the main con of this by contrast with the cross-section method is that we have to have some understanding of 3D shapes. We have to be able to think in 3D and understand exactly what happens when we flatten this shape down or shine a light and see what it covers inside the two-dimensional plane. And that is, can be harder or easier depending on what shape we have. And some flattenings will make the problem easier, some not. Once that's solved, though, the inside integral, the finding the bounds for that tends to be a little bit easier than it is in the other direction. And all of these are difficult. There's no getting around the difficulty in these types of problems, but those are the main methods that you can use to try and help you in these problems.